already know that the elites are planning to merge together with machine and live forever in their new world order. But did you also know that they're planning to technocratize the economy? Going back to Patrick Wood, publisher, he's an economist, uh, renowned, exposed the trilaterals, co-wrote the book Trilaterals Over Washington with the icon Anthony C. Sutton, who blew Skull and Bones wide open with Charlotte Iserby. Uh, he joins us. Okay, so get into, we got up to Brzezinski, who he is, who David Rockefeller is. Tell us, explain technocracy, and then what's happening in our world. Americans know not to like communism. Well, explain what technocracy is. Communism by the elite, by another name, with them offshore exempt from it. Patrick Wood, break it down. Well, when I discovered technocracy as a historical study a few years ago, it really piqued my interest, and I said I had to go and research it uh, in depth. And I, I made some, you know, several trips to uh, secure original research uh, on technocracy. I found out that it had been skipped in the history books primarily because at the time in the 30s, Randolph Hearst got so hacked off by being used by these people that he sent a memo out to all of his newspapers around the country and told them, uh, basically, if you ever mention the word technocracy again, you are fired. And so there was no more articles on technocracy after that time, really. And so it was a little difficult going back and getting this information. But after I studied it enough, it really occurred to me that I needed to go back and read Zbigniew Brzezinski's book again in light of technocracy. And what I found out was, Alex, is that his writings lined up philosophically and, you know, idea for idea sort of thing with the doctrine and dogma that was presented in the 1930s. It was very radical back then. In fact, one prominent technocrat wrote a book, a public book, suggesting that President Roosevelt should, could, should declare himself dictator after his election so that he could implement technocracy back then. We can be thankful that he didn't take him up on that, but uh, life might be different today. Yeah. But when I read, went back and read Bozinski, uh again, I was shocked to realize that he was basically saying the same thing. And here's what's kind of ironic or strange. Brzezinski was at Columbia University at the time. Well, in 1932, Technocracy as a movement was also housed in Columbia University. Even though the movement got kicked out, all of the professors that were part of it stayed on at Columbia. Most, many of them died there in their positions, you know, retired and, and passed. And so here's Brzezinski picking up the trail at the same university where it left off, basically spouting the same dogma. One phrase in particular from his book, one quote, I'd like to read it just because it will just stand your hair on end that Brzezinski understood this, but even back in 68 to 70. And I'll have to be the first to admit, Brzezinski was a brilliant man. I don't agree with him on anything he really did or said or wrote, but you have to give him credit for being a brilliant guy. He foresaw the future back then. Of course, they went and made, manufactured the future after that. But here's what he wrote. The technotronic era, and that technotronic, by the way, is a knockoff for the word technocratic. So he quote, again, the technotronic era involves the gradual appearance of a more controlled society. Such a society would be dominated by an elite, unrestrained by traditional values, Soon it will be possible to assert almost continuous surveillance over every citizen and maintain up-to-date complete files containing even the most personal information about the citizen. These files will be subject to instantaneous retrieval by the authorities, close quote. Now, I remember that book being on the bookshelf when I was a small child, and by the time I was 10 and was able to read good, I tried to read it and didn't understand it. But I sat around the kitchen table hearing all this from my father growing up, and that's the Internet. That's all of it. It was all built and designed to be this grid. So they've built a society to control us, and that's the nanny state. That's the close the green belt for no reason and control people, set up checkpoints, tell your kids they can't play tag, say the state rules your kids. This is putting a grid in the name of keeping us safe in 
that's actually a grid of tyranny and control. Well, the, it's interesting that the, the, the documents from the early 1930s specified what needed to take place in order for technocracy to survive or to, to be, uh, you know, in, uh, implanted. One of the things, uh, because technocracy was energy-based, one of the main tenets of their philosophy was that the price-based economic system was going to be discarded, that was capitalism, of course, and it was going to be substituted by a system of energy credits or energy currency that would be used to uh, monitor all exchange of goods and services in the economy. And a carbon-based currency, we haven't seen that, of course, quite yet, but we see the push for carbon-based everything around the world. This is what sustainable development's about. This is what everything green is about. This is what uh, Agenda 21 is about. Uh, you get the idea. It's everywhere today. And in fact, there, there are actually articles out in the last five years that are, that are, that are openly discussing carbon currency, but it's really in kind of a, still in, in, a, in a minor That's mode. That's right. And in England, they show the school kids a cartoon called Megaopolis, where the computer tells you when you can go outside. It tells you when you can eat. Everyone has their job in the technocracy. Uh, you're only allowed to have one child. This is the plan. So for folks out there, it's fun to know about football and what size, you, you know, jock strap your favorite sports person wears for whatever reason. I'm being sarcastic. But but that doesn't matter. That's a diversion. You read these books written in the 1930s by Aldous Huxley, whose brother was a eugenicist and went on to found the transhumanist movement and head up the UN UNESCO program and Agenda 21 and all of it that came out of the, uh, a meeting in uh, 92. You really see it's all the same control freak scientific dictatorship system under different names. It's just that the brilliantly evil Brzezinski, uh, who believes in things beyond good and evil, foresaw the gestalt and got the real world manager, David Rockefeller, behind it. Because David Rockefeller, if you had to say one guy's king of the world, You'd have to say it was David Rockefeller. Not so much now, but he was the prime mover working 18 hours a day to bring this world government in. And now his people are in place everywhere. And he chose the Brzezinski model on record. And then he integrated it with eco-science eugenicist model, the injections and the additives to dumb us down. It's all White House science are on record. And you realize this is their military battle plan assaulting us. We've got some more news coming up, so stick around after the break. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution. InfoWarsStore.com. <laughs> 